Welcome back to the watch list. Time for a preview now for Pinterest, due out this afternoon, and our panel is ready. Joining me right now, Ali Morabi is with us, equity analyst at Morningstar, and Melissa Armo, founder owner of the Stock Swoosh. Thank you both for being here. So, Ali, after we heard from Meta, do you have takeaways that could help you to focus or pinpoint anything that goes on Pinterest today? Sure. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind. One, of course, you know, with the uncertainty surrounding the macro environment, the economy, of course, you know, last Friday's employment numbers were actually a lot better than, than everyone expected. But with uncertainties, then one should expect a deceleration in growth or a slowdown uh, when it comes to advertising overall. Uh, however, there are actually two main differences. One is the advertisers are probably going to cut, cut budget more on broad-based or brand advertising, brand campaigns, rather than direct response. And that's what we pretty much saw with Meta if you compare it with, let's say, Snap. So now with Pinterest, it's interesting because they actually made a lot of improvement on their direct response advertising capabilities during the pandemic. Uh, so, so that's that's one thing to look for is that have they actually maintained that strength? Have they actually attracted more advertisers based on that improvement in direct response advertising uh, compared to what they uh, what their expertise was before, which is broad based advertising? So that's what we look for when they report later this afternoon. Yeah, and and fair value. You think it's it's worth more than forty bucks? Currently, it's at twenty seven dollars and change, Ali. Uh, yes, and, and that's mainly because we do think that they have that network effect. Uh, we think that the users come onto that platform because they have an intention, an intention to purchase either right there or intention to possibly, more likely, I should say, purchase, you know, four weeks down the road, a couple of months down the road and so forth. So the advertisers like that. And I think that's going to that's going to uh, attract the advertisers onto the platform. Uh, and we do think that once that network effect kicks into gear, uh, then you're talking about uh, more high margin ad revenues come in. And of course, these guys continue to uh, expand their margins and, and reach gap profitability pretty soon. Right, understood. Um, what do you think, Melissa, when you look at the, all these social media stocks, obviously we've had some volatility when it comes to Pinterest after the bell today, what are you gonna be watching for? One, how it reacts on earnings tonight, whether it gaps up or gaps down, and then, of course, the market tomorrow, because we gapped down today in the market, and we didn't really go anywhere, and the market feels heavy to me. The only reason the pin interest rallied the last couple of weeks is because the market rallied. When you look at where it was from off the highs all the way back in 2021, again, this is after COVID, after it had the run-up, this stock has lost like 75% of its value, so there's not much that... It's, it's going to do to make me love it. And there's no way it's gonna reach anything but a four in front of it on earnings. So even if it would gap up on earnings tonight, you'd be lucky to get over $30 a share. So when you look at Meta, you look at Facebook, you look at some of these ones that are reported on Friday or Thursday night, everything bomb that was out, Apple, Amazon, Google, everything was down Friday morning. I really think this has been a lackluster earnings season. And even if you go all the way back to the beginning, including the banks, you know, many of them were down. Morgan Stanley was the only decent reaction and positive reaction on the earnings. So I think overall, again, we're well into earnings season here. The market's trying to make a comeback to start out the year, but the market feels heavy to me. And I think it's gonna be difficult for stocks like Pinterest and other things too, that have been struggling for the last 12 to 18 months to really go anywhere if the market wants to keep falling. Yeah, understood. And I'm sure that that 43 target is, is more a 12 month target. Ali, tell me about the other names in the group. I mean, here we're expecting for Pinterest to see revenue to rise, earnings to drop, and of course layoffs as they've been working on cost cutting. Um, where does that fit into other names? Are, you know, are there other names that you like in the group as well? Tell me the broader picture. Sure, uh, it actually fits in pretty pretty much in line with the other names. Uh, our, our high, na our top uh, favorite names in in these specifically, very specifically in the social network, actually is still uh, Meta. Uh, so, I, and I think those guys have taken the right steps towards actually becoming operating more efficiently, focusing more on the bottom line uh, compared to what they have done uh, historically. Uh, so, uh, but I think Pinterest is also moving in, in that direction. I mean, the announcement that they made regarding the layoffs last week, uh, we think that certainly 
basically tells us that they are focusing on expanding those margins uh, while at the same time, of course, continuing to drive uh, top line growth. Although, again, the macro uncertainty uh, can pressure that top line growth a, a little bit. So, uh, so to answer your question, yes, Meta still remains our favorite names in, in the entire social network. Uh, space now. Overall, uh, some of the names that we that I also cover, some of the other names that I also cover that I like, and I think that they're uh, they look pretty attractive. Include Alphabet um, and also Uber. Completely different sector, but I think you should keep Alphabet and Uber in mind too. All right, we had a guest earlier who liked Uber. Uh, Melissa Armo, final thoughts, big picture on the market, or names that you do like, or are you more worried about a recession? Well, I think there's a high possibility that we could be already in a recession. Again, it's very hard to pinpoint the beginning of a recession. But I think that even though we rallied last week after the Fed announcement, the Fed is going to continue to raise rates. They may just continue to do a quarter point, a quarter point, a quarter point. It didn't make sense the way the market reacted last week, which was positive on what he said. To me, he didn't say anything to rally on. And I think all we've done is expand the range. So we could be range bound in the market faking a rally, faking higher, faking lower for the next three to six months. And that makes it difficult for people to trade. You have to find specific stocks that you love to buy and specific stocks that you really want to grab hold of to short because it's going to be choppy for traders. So people need to watch what they're doing, money manage themselves and make sure you take profits. Okay. Ali Mograbi and Melissa Armo, thank you both very much. Good to see you. That's going to do it for us here on The Watch List. I'm Nicole Petalides. Thanks for being with me. Market on Close is next.